I've saved well over $10,000 on flights over the past several years of travel. And I know we've covered the best websites to find cheap flights before on this channel, which I'll link to below. But today I wanna to share some extra outside of the box tips that you can use to book cheap flights on your next trip. Whether you barely ever book flights or you booked 100, I guarantee you'll learn a new strategy or two by the end of this video. Tip one is to take advantage of positioning flights. A positioning flight is basically adding an extra flight to your itinerary just to save some money. There are several different ways that this can save you money. First, if flights are too expensive to your target destination, you can search for cheaper flights that will get you as close as possible. Then you just tack on an extra budget flight to the end. Here's a quick example that I just found on the fly. Let's say you live in Detroit and you wanna go vacation in Malta. Prices for your dates in October are $1,021. But if you look in Google Flights Explore feature, you can see that you can travel to Vienna for just $677. I then popped over to Ryanair and saw that flights from Vienna to Malta are just 20 to 30 pounds per direction. So if you wanted, you could stop in Vienna for a couple days, get to explore a whole new destination and still save around $300 on flights. This also works on the other end of the flight. If you don't live near a major airline hub, you can take a cheap budget flight from your home to a major airline hub to save money on your main flight. Lastly, you can sometimes apply this same principle if you're buying flights with points or miles. Some airlines price their award flights based on distance ranges. You may be able to pay less points for your flight if you're willing to take an extra positioning flight that decreases the distance of your main flight. By decreasing that distance, you may be bumped down to a cheaper award range. Now, if you wanna squeeze every last ounce of value from your points and make them stretch as long as humanly possible, then this can help you, especially if you do it often. But if you don't care quite that much, then the savings you get may not be worth the hassle. Next up is less of a tip and more of a myth busted, and it may be a little bit controversial. Now let me tell you, I've used incognito mode for years when searching for cheap flights. Many people swear by the strategy and they claim that if you don't use incognito mode, then the airlines will track you with cookies and see that you're searching for flights and then increase the prices. That said, recently I stopped using incognito mode to search for flights. For one, incognito windows are just a little bit annoying to use, but more importantly, I learned from Going that this is a myth. Over at Going, they're literally searching for thousands of flights per day and their entire business model rest on being able to find crazy cheap flights. And yet they do not use incognito mode. Since they have way more data to work with than I do, I think they know what they're talking about. What do you guys think about incognito mode? Let everyone know below in the comments. By the way, if you want cheap flight deals from your home airport sent straight to your inbox, I'll link to Goings free plan and a free trial of their premium plan down below in the description. The next tip is to take advantage of airline rules and laws. There are a couple of rules that every traveler should know. The first is the 24 hour rule. This rule states that you can either freeze a price for 24 hours or you can cancel within 24 hours for free and get a refund. Most airlines offer the second option. The requirements for this rule is that the flight needs to be either to or from the US booked directly with the airline website on the US version of the website and booked more than seven days before the flight. So if you meet these requirements and see a killer deal or see a mistake fare or something, just book it right away without even thinking, then you'll have 24 hours to figure out if it actually works for you or not. If you wait to figure everything out before you book, you may miss out on the price. The next rules to know are the cancellation rules and the rescheduling rules. Most people dread the thought of a canceled or rescheduled flight, but if you have enough advance notice, it can actually be a blessing in disguise. If an airline cancels or significantly modifies your itinerary, they either have to book you on a new flight or refund you with cash. The benefit for you is that you can choose which flight you wanna be rebooked on. So for example, if you originally booked a red-eye flight in the middle of the night that kinda of sucked just because you wanted the cheapest prices, now you can change the time of your flight and choose one that's earlier in the day or that has less layovers, and so now you get the benefit. Another important note is let's say you book a non-refundable ticket and it turns out you want to cancel this ticket. Instead of calling up the airline and getting screwed because you have a non-refundable ticket, 
you can just wait it out and see if the airline ends up changing the itinerary or canceling it themselves and then you get your cash refund. Note that airline regulations vary by country and these are regulations in the US. But if you're traveling to or from Europe, you may have even more benefits and perks, which I explain in this video. Give me a like if you've learned something from this video so far. And the next tip is to use the Goldilocks window. This is actually another tip I learned from going and it turns out that there's no perfect day or date to buy cheap flights. But there is what going calls a Goldilocks window where you're more likely to find better deals. This is one to three months before a domestic flight or two to eight months before an international flight. And if you're planning to travel during peak seasons like summer or December, you can tack on an extra couple months on top of that. Now, this isn't a guarantee that if you buy flights during this window that you'll get the best prices possible. It's just that during this window, your chances of finding a deal are higher. The further you pass those windows, the higher the chances that you'll overpay. If you wait until the last second, Keep in mind that prices usually jump at the 21 day mark, the 14 day mark, and the seven day mark before the flight. So make sure to time your purchases before the next hike. Before we get into the last couple tips, I made a handy cheap travel hacks cheat sheet with all my best ways to save money traveling. You can grab that in the description below for free. Next up is to make sure that you pay for your flights with a credit card that offers travel insurance. This may not save you money on the price of the ticket, but it could save you tons of money if something ends up going wrong during your trip. That could include things like trip cancellations, delays, and lost luggage. For example, one time one of our flights was delayed, which caused us to miss a connection and made us have to stay overnight in a destination. In this case, the airline wouldn't cover the cost of accommodation, and so we had to find accommodation for ourselves. Luckily, we had friends in the city, but if we hadn't, this could have cost us well over $100 or $200. By paying for the flight, with a credit card that offers insurance for delays and overnight stays, this would have been covered. I'll link to my go-to travel credit card below that offers some awesome extra travel perks. But if you're looking for a free card that offers travel protection, I'll link to one of those as well. Speaking of travel insurance, if you're worried about getting injured or sick on the road, check out my video on travel insurance tips that every traveler needs to know. So this next tip is a bit advanced and really only makes sense if you are a frequent traveler under specific circumstances. That said, even if you're not a frequent traveler now, it's a good tidbit to tuck away. Plus, it's just kind of interesting. So it turns out round trip tickets that originate outside of the US are often way cheaper than round trip tickets between the same destinations that originate inside of the US. Well, at least with European destinations. For example, I just did a quick search for round trip flights between Detroit and London on random dates. If you start in Detroit, the price is $884. But if you start in London, the price is only $678 for the same dates. That's over a difference of 200 bucks, which really is nothing to sneeze at especially if you're able to do this multiple times per year. After this, I continued searching for flights between Detroit and about 20 other European cities, and every single time it was the same. It was cheaper starting from the European side. With other parts of the world, my results were a little less consistent. Anyway, if you travel a ton between the US and Europe, you can take advantage of this. If you're in the US now, you'd basically have to take one one-way flight over to Europe to set the plane in motion. From there, you would just keep buying round trip tickets that depart for the US and return to Europe. It's kind of a mind twister, isn't it? Now this obviously isn't for everyone, but I thought it was too interesting not to share. To make it work, you'd either have to know ahead of time when you need to take the return leg that leaves the US, or buy a ticket that allows you to change the date of the return leg if necessary, or just have the flexibility to be able to organize your life around whichever return date that you choose. These six tips just scratch the surface on how to find cheap flights. For more step-by-step -step tutorials, check out this cheap travel playlist next. And don't forget to follow Project Untethered on TikTok and Instagram for more bite-sized travel hacks. See you guys. Bye-bye.